Good morning, folks. Today we have with us Gorov from Maxim, who's a product definer over there, and is going to tell us all about the new Maxim Simo low power technology, which is ideal for wearables and more. Take it away, Gorov. Sure. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the Simo technology, which is a very innovative uh, uh, architecture for Maxim Integrated. And uh, this one actually is, you know, a breakthrough technology which we have, uh, which productized and it's a single inductor multiple output switching, uh, you know, regulated outputs. So uh, the, the cool thing about this is that you have one inductor and that can produce three switching uh, DC to DC output. Awesome. So now let's go through what are the tough challenges, you know, which are the system engineers are facing today. Um, so the applications where we have seen the IoT devices are on an exponential rise and the consumer products are the big driving forces, which is driving this whole growth. And these are like our variable devices and our, uh, you know, hearable devices. We have remotes, we have vital sign uh, monitoring, fitness tracker. So there's a whole a broad spectrum of parts or products uh, which are in use and growing. And, uh, there are definitely some key problems which we want to address which the system designers are coming across. The number one definitely is that we want solutions which are small size. That's where PCB area comes at a premium. We have the heat issues, like we have to manage the heat very well because now we have devices which are sitting in our ear canal or close to our eyes. Uh, and therefore uh, the heat has to be managed very well. That means the efficiency of your solution has to be a lot better so that there's less heat dissipation. Uh, definitely, as a consumer myself, uh, we don't like to charge our devices way too frequent. So if we can you know, increase the time between the charge cycles, like at least a day, two, or maybe a week, that is what I would want uh, in, a, in a product which I'm using. And that is definitely something which has to be solved uh, efficiently uh, in a product. Then comes the noise. Uh, so like when I'm doing the noise sensing or uh, heart rate sensor, those are very small signals which we are getting from our body. Uh, and hence, you know, we have to make sure that the power solution itself is not inducing additional sources of no noise. And we can actually increase the uh, no uh, signal to noise ratio. And that is what uh, is, you know, another concerning uh, area uh, which has to be addressed. Now, the number of features which are being included, like yeah, even for a hearable, it's not just music anymore. It's also, uh, you know, language translation, which is happening right on the spot, which means that there's more amount of processing going on. And which means that you uh, do require more number of output rails or regulated rails in your system. So that is, uh, you know, uh, a growing need in the, in, in the products nowadays. And definitely uh, fast time to market because uh, you know your timing for the products have to be very, very right. Uh, it's very critical uh, because you can lose the window. Now, uh, how do we reduce that? I'm going to address all of this and show how our Simo Premix uh, helps win this. So, what are the possible system loads with something like this? Sure. So, uh, what happens in a typical system is that. You have a Bluetooth for communication. You have, uh, you know, sensors like NFC for payment. You have audio. Uh, you have a micro which has to do all the computation. Uh, so these are the typical loads which you would have in your uh, variable devices or the IoT devices. Mm -hmm. And you see that the output voltages which are required for these rails uh, is varies from 1.2 all the way to 5. And uh, and this is the typical one. There are cases where they go even broader, like a 0.8 up to 5.5. Uh, you need a lithium ion charger to have a portable solution uh, uh, because uh, so that you can carry it around. There are less wires or there are no wires uh, in your whole solution. And you need high system efficiency. You need a small solution size and definitely low IQ. And on the right, you see that that is our product. Uh, it shows you that you have one inductor and which has three regulated outputs, which can generate 1.2 all the way to five. 
Uh, we have an integrated linear charger, uh, have power sequencing push button. We have an LDO for low noise and I2C communication for configuration. So it shows you how it acts as a full system uh, solution uh, in, you know, in, your, in your power solution. And so now this, when I was talking about fast time to market, when you have this one solution powering all the whole system, uh, that means you don't have to worry about characterizing other units or other parts. This one solution you characterize and you're done. And you can use this, it's very scalable. You can use it over multiple platforms. So that's where, you know, saving your time to market really comes in. Cool. Now let me talk about how this SIMO technology actually works. So this shows you one inductor and three outputs. Now these three outputs, in this case, we have this one output which goes, when it goes below a certain or a specified threshold, it tells the controller that it needs to be serviced. What that means is that there is first an energizing cycle or building energy in the inductor. Uh, so you see the current path where the energy is being built in in the inductor until the inductor current hits, hits the I limit. And after that, that energy is delivered to the output capacitor. Hmm. So now this happens for every time one of the outputs, whenever it goes below the certain threshold, it, it raises the flag and that's what initiates this cycle. Now any output which goes through this will initiate its own cycle and will be addressed uh, accordingly. Uh, one key thing I want to bring up is this doesn't have to be sequential. Uh, because these outputs are different output voltages and have different load conditions. So for example, the SVB0 uh, is a 200 milliamp load, uh, SVB1 at 5 milliamps and SVB2 at 10 milliamps, then definitely the SVB0 will be raising its flag more frequently. That means it will be serviced more frequently. Uh, so that is the uh, very cool way how it is able to get three switching DC to DC regulated outputs with this architecture. Hmm. Now, there are multiple ways of implementing uh, a solution. Uh, this is I'm talking about discrete solutions, right? And you can have, you know, I'm showing a competitor which has uh, some blocks like the charger and maybe one of the DC to DC switching regulator. Uh, but they need three regulators in the system, and so there'll be a need for additional discretes. Now that shows up as, uh, so that shows up that your solution size significantly goes up. Okay. Can all of those and, be turned on at the same time? Uh, so they are on at the same time, but the, the amount of area which it takes on your board now increases because you have to have additional components on the board. Right. So your solution size actually overall becomes a lot bigger. Mm. Uh, and definitely there is another way of having, uh, you know, an integrated solution, but uh, how it's being done is that your LDOs, for example, are integrated with a DC to DC switching regulator, and hence you have to give up on uh, efficiency, right? So now we are addressing this with our teammates. So this is a busy slide, uh, which I have here, uh, and then I'll walk you through it. So on the left side, uh, it's a traditional power solution, like one of the solutions which has been shown on the previous slide. So uh, this was the one where we have one switching and additional LDOs. And I'm comparing the performance of that with using SIMO for the same application. And so, Let's start with, on the left side, you have this 2.05 volt from the buck regulator. And uh, this one is showing you about 90% efficiency. Uh, and you see that the 1.2 volt LDO, which is powering the micro, is only, does only has 58.5% uh, efficiency. So the way to look at a system is to actually compute the system efficiency. Uh, and on the right side, you see that I have three SIMO outputs powering the 3.3, 2.05, and the 1.2. And I have one LDO, which is integrated in our PMIC, uh, which is showing about 90%. So 
So when I do the full system efficiency calculation, you see that the system efficiency of the traditional solution is about 69.5%. Mm -hmm. And the one with the FIMO PMIC is 78.4. You know, it's about 9% higher. Wow. Yeah, so that's a, that's a very big uh, improvement in your system efficiency. And what that means also is that my supply current has reduced, which means my battery is going to last longer. I'm dissipating less amount of heat. And uh, another thing, my, the architecture for the SIMO is a bug boost architecture. What that means is that my, even though my input voltage can be below the output voltage, it's still going to regulate. It's going to boost at that time. So on the traditional solution for the 3.3 volt LDO, the system has to be cut off at 3.4 because after that, LDO will not regulate properly. Whereas the SIMO, even when you go, your input voltage goes below 2.7, you're still fine. So that again increases your battery life. And again, all of this using one inductor and all with flexible, you know, one solution and you're done. So that's, that's where, cool. you know, it's, it's, it's great for system designers uh, from that point of view. Now, we also talked about the solution size. And on the right over here, you see that uh, I've chosen the components which are the most typical components available. Uh, so like a 0402 output capacitor is very typical, very common in applications. They are very easy to get. Uh, so comparing with those components, you see that using just one inductor has saved 27%, uh, you know, it's a 27% smaller solution size as compared to competition. So we see that it's winning on all fronts uh, for this application. Now I can walk you through some of the common, you know, operating characteristics which are critical for design purposes. We talked about efficiency and uh, showed how it, you're, you're able to increase the system efficiency. Uh, the second one is about the output ripple. Now the output ripple, uh, in this case, we have an example where it's 10 milliamp per channel is the load on the three outputs, which is 3.3, 1.2, and 2.05. Uh, I have a 10 microfarad capacitor uh, on the output, and there is definitely um, the derating of the capacitor, which happens. So I've put in the effective capacitance over here. Uh, so for a higher voltage of a 6.3 volt capacitor, the effective capacitance seen by the system is only 3 microfarad. Hmm. Uh, it's 8 microfarad for a 1.2 and 5 microfarad for a 2.05. Now, even with such low effective capacitance, you see that the output ripple is only in the range of 20 millivolts, which is really good. Uh, because majority of the systems or the rails uh, can absorb up to 50 millivolts or maybe even 80 to 100 millivolts of ripple. So this is really good performance uh, you know, parametric. Now the next one is about low transients. So consider a case where uh, you know, you are collecting data, your, your system is collecting data and processing it. And the 1.2 volt is typically powering the micro and when it's processing, it's going to take more supply current or more load current. And that is what this emulates, that you're going from a 10 milliamp to a 100 milliamp load step. Uh, and key things which I point out here is that you don't have any observable undershoot or overshoot when the low transient happened on the 1.2. And there is no crosstalk across other outputs when this happened. So they're very isolated, right? So this is again a very, uh, you know, very good performance criteria, uh, which system designers consider that there should be no crosstalk between different rails. And that is what is demonstrated here. Awesome. What about audio applications? I heard that you can use a lower quality audio codec with a low power supply rejection ratio. Sure. Okay. So uh, let me walk you through the audio uh, system diagram of what mm -hmm. are the blocks which are on your hearable uh, device. So if you have the small hearable device, you have a Bluetooth because they're connected with the phone. Uh, there's an audio codec which is converting your audio so that you can hear it through the speaker and the noise cancellation. 
Uh, you have biosensors to, you know, to increase maybe volume or have heart rate sensors uh, integrated and definitely uh, have a PMIC which can have regulated power for all of this, right? Now, what you want to make sure is that audio is noise sensitive. The signal strength is really small. And you have to make sure that uh, you have to minimize the noise sources as much as possible, right? And if your audio codec has low PSRR, which is low power supply rejection ratio, mm -hmm. uh, that means that any noise on the input side of the codec will get translated as audio output. That is something which you really want to avoid uh, for your product. And so our PMIC, we, we take care of this. We take care of how customers can optimize their solution by you know, turning the knobs, or control knobs on our PMIC for this. So the three ways you can actually address uh, the problems of the noise. One is that our bug boost output can be put in series with the LDO. Now that uh, significantly reduces the noise. And because it's integrated, uh, you know, you don't even have to worry about any additional component, right? That's why we had chosen all the resources for this PMIC very carefully, keeping all of this in mind. You can also reduce the current limit for your inductor. Uh, that helps you further reduce or optimize your uh, ripple, output voltage ripple. And the third option is definitely you can add an additional capacitor. Uh, you, you know, you can use a 10 microfarad 0402. Uh, there are also 22 microfarad in the same case size. So even without increasing the board size uh, or the size of your component, you can easily uh, reduce the noise on those rails. To further show you this, uh, we've used a I've done an example with the Maxim codec and the PMIC, uh, where the, uh, the codec is powered with the gold standard discrete LDOs. And uh, we're powering the audio codec, and we're going to compare that response with what happens when we power the, uh, the audio codec with the Simo PMIC. Okay. So, so this one shows you the noise floor. Now, noise floor means that this is the most sensitive. There is no signal applied to it. And this would clearly show if there is any interference uh, which happens because of the sign off, right? So on the left side, you see that the system which was powered with the LDOs, and on the right side is a system which is powered with the SIMO PMIC. And you see that the noise floor is really good. You, it's almost unchanged, right? So this shows you that there is the performance of this is really good. It does not affect the audio performance from the noise floor. Right. Now, also did the test where we're adding an actual signal uh, of one kilohertz as our human ear is sensitive to the one uh, kilohertz the most. Uh, and so both sides, we're injecting the same signal. It's about a one millivolt uh, input signal. Uh, and the 32 ohm and the 15 micro Henry, uh, that's what emulates your earbud or your uh, hearable devices. And you see on both sides that they are, uh, you know, almost identical. You would see some extra noise sources around like 500 kilohertz or 500 hertz uh, right here. But the magnitude of this is so low that it's beyond, you know, the human ear. Uh, the reason I'm also uh, confident and, you know, emphasizing on that is you also see the 60 hertz injected and this noise was lower than the 60 hertz, right? So this would not even be heard by a human on that. Uh, and so that's where this shows that, you know, it's a really good perform a performance criteria. So if I want to summarize this, uh, all these tests, uh, you see that the SIMO PMIC uh, is used to power the ultra low noise audio codecs, helps increase the battery life without affecting the audio quality, right? We have done a lot more study on this one. This was a snapshot of what I'm showing here. Uh, but the summary table here shows you about the dynamic range of, uh, 
you know, how the dynamic range with this power supply for the audio codec is almost unchanged for when we compare the case one and case two, which is the LDO solution versus the CIMO solution. So they're almost identical. So this typically uh, is a question from our customers and you know, we build collateral, we understand what the customer concerns are, and that's why we're providing all these collateral to help them uh, show that this is a really good solution for uh, their system. Now, we have, uh, so the products which you see here, these are the whole product line we have released in the market. The one which I showed, so I'm gonna go through these three swim lanes. Uh, the top one is the one where we have the SIMO technology or the SIMO architecture with the charger integrated, okay? Uh, so that's the one which we have been seeing so far in all the previous slides, okay? Uh, we have the 278. Now in cases where you have more number of inputs for your system, uh, can be a remote, can be toys, uh, can be a lot of other uh, places, you need more GPIOs as input sources. And that is where the MAX 77278, uh, we have addressed that by adding more number of GPIOs. Then there are applications where, which are not battery powered, right? Or they're not rechargeable battery powered. And hence, but you still can get the benefit of using the SIMO uh, because you need, your system requires, still requires three rails, uh, maybe a five volt or a 3.3, 1.8, 0.8, uh, you know, very different output voltages. And that is where the middle swim lane addresses that concern or that need. And um, so we have the 640, which has the SIMO uh, with the LED drivers and the LDO, uh, but no charger. We have uh, two parts, which are SIMO only parts. Uh, and the one with the 17270, uh, this one is a nano power. And also is, when I say nano power, it's a nano supply current. That means your supply current consumption is uh, in the range of nano amps. Wow. Uh, the other part which we have is in the range of one microamp per SIMO channel. So it's still very low, but we have also attained nano power. And that's <laughs> what this particular part uh, shows. This also has uh, one of the uh, you know feature where if the customer wants to change the settings on their end uh, and not as a default part which we provide them uh, with custom settings, then they can actually change that over there with a resistor programmable. And that increases additional you know, uh, flexibility in the system uh, for the system designer. <laughs> and uh, the last swim lane uh, talks about the 77734. And this one is a charger. Uh, with an LDO and also includes a ship mode. So a ship mode is basically that you want to increase the shelf life. I'm waiting for a product. I buy my phone. I buy my hear, hearing, uh, you know, earbuds, and I want to use them right away. And I don't want that. I open them from the box and I want to charge it. Right. So that's that. for the ship mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like we're so eager. We have been waiting for that package to arrive and, you know, want to take it out and use it right away. And that's what the ship mode really helps out uh, because that disconnects the battery from the system and increases the shelf life. Awesome. So you see that we have a lot of products in this already. This is uh, our first you know, generation parts. We are working on the second generation parts already. Uh, and you'll see a lot more coming along uh, over here. So, um, I've put also a few slides which will, you know, be of a lot of interest uh, to the audience here uh, about how or what are the real needs in the system. And I'm sh I'll show you some block diagrams or examples of what are typically the needs in those uh, blocks. So here I'm using our products, uh, and these are real examples, uh, where you have the audio codec. Uh, which includes the Bluetooth, uh, the audio codec amplifier, has a processor or the microcontroller already built in. And all of them require different output voltages. And I've also included the typical loads or the peak loads they would require in their system, right? Now, 
for the audio codec, as we talked about, the case where if that is a noise sensitive uh, rail, and hence uh, you would have an LDO powering that particular uh, system, uh, which is being you know powered from the SIMO. So mm. the 3.1 volt output will be the input for the LDO powering this one, right? So here you see that you need a lithium ion charger, you have a small battery, uh, you're using one inductor because that solution, uh, system solution is so small, it's fitting in my ear, and uh, you know I don't have much area to play with. And so that is why having one inductor, uh, which not only is saving space, but also my bomb cost, which is the bill of material cost mm -hmm. uh, for this whole solution, while providing all the benefits of higher efficiency, lower you know heat dissipation uh and uh, lower iq and you can still so, uh, change the output voltage independently for channels right yes yeah, so uh in this case you can always have a default output which is getting uh, powered up but you know we have i2c and that i2c allows you to change the outputs dynamically like you can change the output for say the 1.2 volts all the way from 0.8 to 5.5 if, if need be, right? So that really adds a lot of flexibility in the system. Cool. And on the right side, uh, because this is with the wire on your application, uh, you know, you don't need all the rails on the other side of your, or the other side of the earbud, and hence your power rails are significantly reduced. And that is where the 77734 becomes a very good fit, right? So that shows how these two products are fitting in, you know, right in the system and doing the job. Cool. Now, you have this true wireless solution, right? Where there's no wires at all. And that is becoming more of a preferred, uh, you know, option for uh, the consumers and, uh, and the users. And basically what that means is that in this case, you want the two uh, power solutions on either of the earbud to be identical because they need to have the same capability. Hmm. And that is where this example shows you that using the same IC uh, of Mac 77650, uh, you develop the part, you develop the firmware, and now you can use it on both sides, it's identical. And this is something we also keep in mind even for our next generation products that firmware is a big pain point for our system designers, right? Uh, because there's a huge amount of testing which has to be done, so many use cases. And what we do to take care of that is that the next generation products or the products in the family, we try to maintain the register map as similar or as close as possible uh, to each other. That is no change so that they can easily port the firmware from one platform to another platform. So this gives you an example of how you can use this one power PMIC and power your whole system, again, for your earbud. Now, there's a smartwatch, and I'm wearing one right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one, again, uh, you know, has a display, has GPS, microcontroller, has different sensors, like I can easily get to know uh, my heart rate, and also now, uh, you know, it comes with fall detection, other things, which is you see that the amount of or the number of applications are increasing. And that's where, you know, we are going totally in the right direction of consumers or uh, systems requiring more number of rails along with communication. So all of these different systems or blocks which are in your smartwatch can be powered by, this, uh, by the PMIC directly. Uh, you have the lithium ion battery, 200 milliamps. Uh, the reason I'm pointing out here is the lithium, uh, the linear charger, which is included uh, in this PMIC, can be programmed from 7.5 milliamps all the way to 300 milliamps. Mm -hmm. That addresses such a broad range of uh, requirements, uh, which means that the previous slide we saw the battery was 50 milliamps, uh, whereas the smartwatch is about 200 milliamps and the same linear charger can be programmed uh, to charge both the batteries, you know, fast. So that's where the flexibility again kicks in. Right. 
This one is a non-rechargeable uh, solution. Uh, this is using a coin cell or alkaline uh, batteries, like you know how we have the double A batteries, and the six four one. This is the Simo P mix. Now, uh, input voltage range for a Simo P mix is from two point seven volts uh, all the way to five point five volts. So, if your input voltage is like say two volts, it's out of the range uh, for the operating, and that's where uh, you would have a boost regulator, which would boost this voltage up to three volts. And three volts is where a PMIC works totally fine. Uh, and you see that the SIMOS in this case is used to drive different LEDs for the insulin pen. So uh, now that shows you different status. Like when I'm doing my blood test and if my numbers are good within the range, it, it will light up the green. But if it's out of range, it would light up as red, you know, which means, yeah, need to go out, do the exercise, right? So all of this, you see that the complexity in the system of having the micro and the Bluetooth, driving different LEDs, sensors, everything is driven by this particular PV. Right. Smart glasses. Ooh. This was a very interesting application which uh, we had come across. Uh, and uh, here you have, uh, you know, you see that when it's a smart glass, you do need uh, it to be a very slick, uh, smart design because you you cannot have a bulky uh, thing hanging on your face, right? It's, it's driving your personality. And so you see that that is where the solution of having uh, the one inductor and being able to generate three outputs really comes uh, very, very handy. Uh, and this is one of the, you know, key things which enables these kind of applications or else your system becomes bulky and then your product may not even sell, right? So that is where having this becomes a very, uh, addresses all the key problems that the customer has. Powering the typical loads of microcontroller, sensor, you know, have a buzzer, have an input voltage for adapter for charging, uh, all with this single inductor. Now, um, yes, there are a lot of applications which I've shared so far, which are small solution size or very small in form factor. But Simo actually becomes very uh, good, or it, you know, it holds its value very well, even in bigger systems. For example, if you have a sleeping aid device, you know, which you wear on your head, you need to do a lot of processing, and you also. Uh, which means that you need a lot of uh, processing power, but you also have a lot of sensors. And these sensors, because you're monitoring either your heart rate or your breathing rate, uh, maybe the sweat uh, to have the skin conductance, uh, you know, how good of a sleep you're having. So there are so many sensors you can, uh, are needed in these kind of systems. And what I'm showcasing here is you can have the, Maxent 77714 high performance PMIC, uh, you know, which includes, uh, you know, loads which can, which are in the range of two, two amps or one amp or 500 milliamps with that kind of power solution. And then the sensors with the Simo PMIC, right? So you see that you can have, they can coexist with the high performance solution, uh, driving, you know, more processing and also have the sensor part of it which is powered by the Simo. And right. this is really cool because both smart glasses and sleep tech were two things that were like hugely popular this year at CES. Those were like things that, like, oh yeah, those things, I'm just like running around taking pictures of all of those. Uh, so that that's is really correct. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Can you like sort of summarize and kind of tell us what we've learned? Okay. You like so, stuff. <laughs> sure. The key things actually uh, over here is the Simo PMIX are highly integrated, right? Uh, I'm showing you all the, uh, the features which are included uh, on that table. And you, like you have the charger, the, you know, the LDO, the current sync. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, like the AMUX pin, which is the analog MUX pin, which lets you monitor the battery voltage uh, and lets you make decisions and control the charging rate by IR2C. So it's a very, very highly integrated solution. 
It's really small in size. Uh, the full solution size, including passives, uh, is only 19 millimeters square, right? So it's very small. That includes the inductor, the output capacitor, everything. And also it can address different battery volt battery capacities from 7.5 to 300 milliamp. This system has very low IQ. So when you have the four regulators, which is three SIMO outputs and one LDO, when all of them are regulating, your supply current is only 5.6 microamps. And it's very scalable. So if you don't want to use the LDO for you know, a certain time, you can disable it and save the supply current even more. Hmm. And definitely the long battery life, right? So because it offers a system efficiency, higher system efficiency, these are the four key points which are being addressed by the Simon Love it. Uh, now, we do have, uh, you know, a lot of collateral on our website, uh, which is, uh, you know, we have the EV kits, we have uh, the data sheet programmer's guide to help how to program or what to program to achieve certain goals. And we also provide a SIMO calculator, which helps you determine uh, how well or what you need to adjust for your system loads. So that is what is all available on our website uh, over here, maximintegrate.com slash max77650. Uh, this is a page where we have additional videos, white papers, a uh, lot of uh, you know, explanations. Uh, so if you want more clarification, definitely uh, this one, or even to you know, show it to broaden out because you saw, you saw the video, you are here attending this, but you want to share this with your colleagues and other system designers of how this can be fit in in their applications. You know, these are all the collateral which is available from Maxim uh, to help address all your questions. And this is our key team, uh, which uh, you know you contact, and we are very responsive. Uh, and you see, we have Roger for business management. I'm Gaurav. We have Chapin uh, for uh, and Derek for application engineering, uh, and Karthi, who is the product director for this. So uh, this is the team we are driving this, and we are learning so much, uh, and we are addressing all the key issues uh, in the market. So that's all I had to share here uh, in my presentation. Thank you so much for sharing all this with us. This is super cool. We have a question from the audience that is, are the slides going to be available for download? And to answer that, I believe, yes, they are through Maxim in a couple of days. I'm not sure what exactly the release schedule is, but everyone who was able to view this uh, has registered. And so you'll have access to the materials afterwards. And you should be on the lookout for materials from Maxim about that. Thank you so much, Gaurav. This was fascinating. Thank you so much. Cheers. Have a great one. Thank Thanks. you, everyone, Bye. for tuning in.